The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O God. Chapter 3, verses 13 to 19. Jesus went up into the hills and summoned those he wanted. So they came to him and he appointed twelve. They were to be his companions and to be sent out to preach with power to cast out devils. And so he appointed the twelve, Simon to whom he gave the name Peter, James the son of Zebedee, and John the brother of James, to whom he gave the name Bonages or sons of thunder. Then Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, the man who was to betray him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, the readings today focus on the covenant. The first reading that we have heard from the letter to the Hebrews focuses on the covenant of the old and the new. And the writer says that the old is gone away and the new covenant is placed before us by Jesus. And in the gospel passage, we see how Jesus established and lived and gave his disciples to live that covenant through their ministry. My dear friends, the ancient covenant was very well known to the Jews, which we find in Exodus chapter 24, verses 1 to 8, wherein God graciously approached them and offered a unique relationship which was solely dependent on keeping the law or obedience. Here, in the first reading, the argument is that the old covenant is done away with Jesus who has brought a new relationship with God basing entirely on love. Dear friends, we can distinguish certain elements or certain marks between the old and the new covenant. Number one, the new covenant is not something new, but it is already found in Jeremiah chapter 31, 31 to 34, which is already quoted by the Hebrews. The second point it is that it is new in its scope, meaning it is going to unite the house of Judah and Israel. When we look at the kingdom which was already split during the days of Rehoboam, but now God through Jesus is going to unite and therefore there is going to be no distinction, but the old enemies are going to be united as friends. And therefore, it has a new scope, which is of a uniting and living in a communion way. The third aspect it is that it is new in its universality. Now, all men would know God. There are going to be no distinction between any person, whether it is wise, simple, great and small. No distinction whatsoever, but everyone is going to be united and brought under one umbrella into one relationship with God. 
The next element, the fourth element, we see the fundamental difference between the old covenant and the new covenant. Now, the old covenant depended on solely on obedience. That was a must in the old covenant. But when you look at the new covenant, it says that the new will be inscribed on men's hearts and minds. And men will obey God not because of punishment, but because they love Him. So, the new covenant is a completely getting, is getting evolved in and through love. The fifth element, it is, shows that it will affect forgiveness. Now, God said that He would be gracious to their impurities and could forget their sins. Now, it is God is taking the responsibility upon Himself. It is God who is going to extend, uh, walk the extra mile for us. And it is all for everything is getting evolved out of God. And therefore, the new covenant puts man back into the track of a right relationship with God who is of justice, but justice is completely given in and through love. Dear friends, the beauty of this new covenant is that man is put on track with God, not because of obedience, but entirely because of God's love, which is the essential and the fundamental thing that the new covenant is all about. It is through the sacrifice of Jesus, which alone made the new covenant possible for man. So my dear brothers and sisters, this is very well reflected in the gospel passage. Whatever God said to his people in the Old Testament, the, the aspect of the new covenant that is established, Jesus is leaving this new covenant. And the gospel passage that we have read according to Matt, according to Mark, he makes it very clear and simple when he says that Jesus chose the twelve. And we beautifully it says that they were to be his companions, to be with him first and then sent out. So my dear brothers and sisters, this is very well reflected in the passage. Number one, when Jesus wanted his message to be spread and secondly wanted in a, a medium to spread this message the message of this new governor the aspect of love which God had for each one of us and to make it more aware to make us aware of God's love to make us aware of God's unconditional love his justice his care concern Jesus has done this and spread this message in and through his 12 companions the second is the me the second message was to live together and in community that is living with each other and for each other which was very important and therefore jesus began by choosing to be first with each other the 12 companions of jesus were belonging to different uh, different groups. One was tax collector, other belonging to zealot, the other belonging to fish, a uh, fisher folk. So they were belonging to different aspects, but then they were all brought together because they were to go out into the world and spread this message to every community and make a unity and spread this message of love. And therefore, Jesus first calls them to be with him, to know, to understand, and then go out. Not go out and then come in, but first be with Jesus 
to know him to understand him and after having understood him go and spread this message so therefore jesus began his message with a mixed group as we look at the 12 companions were not belonging to a same group but they were belonging to different group and what was the purpose the purpose was first to be with jesus to know him to understand him and then take that understanding take that knowledge take that message to the people and make them aware and therefore jesus did not send them only with this but he sent them with two things the number one with his message and number two with power so my dear brothers and sisters every time we participate in the holy eucharist jesus doesn't send us just like that to he doesn't say go the masses and did go and leave jesus no he sends us with message that message is every day through the readings we get to spread that message to our brothers and sisters who are away from god who are away from the love of god who are in darkness so jesus sends us with a message to these people and not only with the message but also with the power every time when we receive the body of jesus we receive along with the body the power of jesus and it is in and through this power that we are strengthened to spread this message of love peace and joy so my dear brothers and sisters as we participate in this holy eucharist and jesus sends us to take this message of new covenant wherein god is god of love god of forgiveness we are called to take this message as saint sebastian did in and throughout his life though he was persecuted the first time but when he was rescued he again went to spread the message and god was with him in that same manner as we participate in this holy eucharist the lord gives us his message and along with the message gives us his power in and through the body and blood so let us take the message and with the power of jesus go and spread the message of this new covenant wherein god is god of love who is ready to forgive and accept us as his own children may god bless us and guide us and strengthen us to be his followers